Hello, everybody, and welcome to the BetaCast episode 83. I'm your super awesome host, Kyle, and with <laughs> me over there in USA land is Tyler. Hi. That's all Hi, I got to say. That's all I have to say. <laughs> okay, apparently Tyler isn't impressed that I'm hosting this time. No, so I'm, I'm impressed. I'll have to be impressed at home. <laughs> I'm I'm happy because th- that somewhat means that I don't have to talk as much, which can be nice sometimes. Oh, just wait, Tyler. Oh, just good. Wait. What do you have in store? <laughs> well, we've got a packed via cast here, Tyler. So there's going to be lots of talking. Even if you did little talking, it would still be lots of talking compared to usual. All right. Well, I'm excited. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> you should be excited. And speaking of excited... What have you been playing, Tyler? Anything exciting? Uh, well, it's a nice segue there, but actually absolutely nothing exciting unless you count J-Star's Victory Versus, which is exciting, but I'm not going to count that because <laughs> I barely played any of it. I played maybe like 10 minutes of it, but I've been just... Uh, I can't think of a word for it that's not dirty, but I'm just going to go with it. Balls deep in... <laughs> Uh, that real fishing master's challenge game or whatever. <laughs> God, I hate this game. Oh, man. <laughs> it is just... Uh, I'm doing it for review. So uh, I'm pushing through it. And this game seems to be way too long. Because I feel like I've already played like five hours of it. And I just beat the first chapter. And there's five chapters. Ouch. And it's all (laughs) about fishing. So, that's literally... Tyler's lowest score ever. Yeah, yeah, it might... (laughs) I mean, okay. It's boring, but it's not a bad game. It's hard to explain. Like, if you're into fishing, I could maybe see you really liking this game because you could just chill and catch some fish, but God, it's so boring. <laughs> so, I don't know. We'll we'll see. It's not going to get a favorable review for me, I'll, I'll tell you that. So, if you've been holding your breath for a real Fishing Masters Challenge review, you might just want to pass this one. Anyways, yeah, that's that's literally all I've been playing because I'm trying to finish it for review and I want to push through it and it's seeming, like I said earlier, longer than I was expecting so now i really got to push through it to hopefully get a review out quick. So yeah, what about you, Kyle? Well, um, I've been playing a little bit, uh, more than last week at least. Uh, I put a couple hours at least into Hot Shots Golf this week. I love the golf, and I just can't get away from it. It's going to be one of those games that's on my Vita until my Vita dies. Um, <laughs> I also played a little Ollie Ollie 2. Um, haven't played that actually in a while, so I wanted to get back to it, because I'm hoping I can get those scores up and get back in that good graces on the uh, high scores chart, but I don't know. There's a lot of good players out there. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, also played a little Killzone, uh, online, not single player this time, so was matched with some people and they just destroyed me because I haven't played very much, so <laughs> shit happens. Um, and I played, uh, oh, I started up Helldivers and I played probably, I don't know, half hour of that the other day, um, because of the update, there was an update. Um, Which is huge. Yesterday or something like that. Yeah, it was huge. And uh, luckily, I just turned my Vita on and it was like update ready. I was like, sweet. So I jumped into that and played a little bit, but I don't think I encountered anything new. So that's meh. (laughs) And uh, (laughs) I also played Tetris. So that's my addiction. So I can't really, can't can't stop that. that. (laughs) Kai, we have to have an intervention. Yeah, it, it's it's not a bad addiction though, because I, I can I can resist it a bit, but I can't resist it completely, <laughs> and it's not ruining my life. So yeah, there's that. <laughs> All right, we'll let it slide. Better. <laughs> well, so yeah, that's that's pretty much all I've been playing. Nice, much better sounding games than the game I've been playing. So. Lucky <laughs> <you>. <laughs> 
All right, well, instead of what we've been playing, let's move on to talking about what other people have been playing with reviews from the week. And Tyler, you can start this one off. All right, first up, we've got Gundam Breaker 2, which was reviewed by Adrian, and he gave it a 4.1 out of 5. And he says, quote, Despite the minor flaws, Gundam Breaker 2 is a must-have in every importer's collection. With lots of replay value and multiplayer, upgrading your Gunpla with the best gear available will never feel like a chore. With excellent graphics, great sound, and solid gameplay, I feel that it's worth the high import price. End quote. So yeah, this is an import game only. Uh, I don't really know much about the game at all. I haven't read the review because I don't plan on re- uh, importing it, so hasn't really grabbed my attention, and I don't think Kyle likes mech games. Isn't this a mech game type thing? I hate everything mech, so yeah. <laughs> so um, it's it's a mech battle game. It's kind of like, I don't know, a kind of Dynasty Warriors-esque, but with gunpla. So I don't know if you like that kind of stuff. Go read the review, or if you like something kind of like that, go read the review. But yeah, not for me. <laughs> yep, definitely read the review. There you go. And the other review uh, this week, only two, is Dust Force, which was reviewed by new writer Jimmy, and he gave it a 4.5 out of 5, saying, quote, Dust Force was great when it came out in 2012 for PC, and in 2015, it's just as awesome on Vita. For $10, you really can't go wrong, unless challenging platformers aren't your thing, of course. End quote. So high praise there from Jimmy. And if you want to read his review and see how the new guy stacks up, it's a good place to start. I haven't played Dust Force. Have you, Tyler? Nope. I've thought about picking it up, but I just it kind of just got pushed aside, and you know how that goes. <laughs> yep. Somebody's going to have to Dust Force you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, that's... You love my jokes. Shut up. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was pretty clever. I, I'm not going to lie. I was thinking of a pun myself, but you beat me to it. I'm quicker, Tyler. I'm quicker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't sound impressed. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. Well, since you're not impressed, let's move on, and let's move right into the new releases, because we actually have them now that Europe is uh, doing their new releases on Tuesdays. So we have the whole list, and it is as follows. The North American list is Geometry Wars 3 Dimensions Evolved for $14.99 and Nico Burrow Cat's Block for $7.99. What about Europe, Tyler? Well, Europe is getting also Geometry Wars 3 Dimensions Evolved. They are also getting Hyper Dimension Neptunia Rebirth 3 V Generations and Nico Burrow Cat's Block. Awesome. Oh, yeah. And for both regions, we have PlayStation Plus offerings going up. So if you have PlayStation Plus, grab these free games. We have Entwined, Geometry Wars 3, Dimensions Evolved, which just released, and Mousecraft this month for Vita. Do you have any of those, Tyler, other than Geometry Wars? I don't have any of them, including Geometry Wars. Well, what the hell, Tyler? It's sitting there with that free symbol taunting me. But I really don't know if I want it. Well, I've tagged all three this month for my PS Plus. I haven't downloaded them yet because I'm near my bandwidth cap and it's switching over in a couple days. So I can wait. But yeah, I've tagged all three. Uh, well, I I don't know. Entwined, meh. Don't really care for it too much. Geometry Wars, it looks like it could be entertaining for maybe one little playthrough, but it's just still not my type of game. And Mousecraft looks like some type of Tetris game, and I'm just not feeling that. So maybe that that will be something you'll want to play, Kyle. Yeah, it kind of is something I want to play, Kyle. Oh. Have you played it before, or is this... Wait, never mind. No, I've looked at a little bit of gameplay videos and stuff like that, so I've seen kind of what it's about, so I'm, I'm down for what it's thrown down. Nice. Seems like there's like different levels where they give you different tasks and stuff like that. So I'm 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 cool with it. Yeah, um, entwined. Create, pardon me. You can create your own levels too. I know how much you love creating things. Yeah, I freaking hate creation. <laughs> um, so I'll, I'll skip that shit. 
Um, as for Entwined, um, I was kind of interested back when they announced it, but I don't know if it's worn off or I don't know. I'll be looking at it. And then Geometry Wars, I don't really know what it's all about because I didn't really notice when it was released on PS3 and PS4, so I, I don't really know. It kind of um, looks but, like a Super Stardust Delta. But just yeah, a, that's like I put the screenshot up, so that that's pretty much like the entirety of my glance at it. Um, and it did look kind of look like uh, Super Stardust. So I kind of enjoyed that. I played the demo of that, and I was kind of thinking of getting that, but then I just kind of never did. And then now I have this for free, so I don't know. I may play it. We'll I, got, I got that game for free, I think, too. Um, that Super Stardust Delta, whatever. Because there's like a promotion. Oh, yeah. yeah, when. Yeah. You... <laughs> there's a whole bunch of promotions that had it for free, and I missed them all for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, mine was with like the original Vita, the 3G one. Like, you had to buy, uh, what was it? Oh, God. It was a certain amount of, like, data for the 3G. And I so I bought that. So I tested out the 3, 3G on the 3G Vita. And they're like, well, we'll send you a, a code later. <laughs> and finally, like, two months later, I got the code. I was like, yeah. Didn't really care, though. That's my All fun right. story. <laughs> well, that's an interesting story. Um, I missed it, I believe, first on PS3. Um, I kind of wanted it. And then my PS3 died, like, right as that whole um, big PSN downage thing happened. So I didn't have a PS3 to get the stuff that they gave you when it came back. So I was kind of fucked at that. And then I think they released it another time for free or, like, on a deal for something. And I wasn't eligible for that either. I was like, whatever. So I'm like, I don't know. I'm not that interested. (laughs) (laughs) Screwed me out of it twice. I I can just not have it. then. (laughs) Wham, wham. Wham, wham, indeed. So, yeah, that's uh, what's going on with the new releases and PlayStation Plus offerings for this week and this month. Let's move on to the news, I think. Tyler, what do you think? Yeah, let's do that. All right. As usual, I'm going to make you start, just because. Well, all right. First up, Zeke Virant has been hard at work bringing his twin-stick, mind-bending game, Soft Body, to the PlayStation Vita. The game is part Hohokam Everyday Shooter Snafu, with a bit of Brother's Tale of Two Sons thrown in for good measure. Recently, Zeke announced some more details about how the game's two single-player modes will be handled. In Soft Body, you use the left and right thumbsticks to control two different characters, Soft and Ghost. While this may be a challenge for most players or most people to wrap their heads around, the game will offer up to levels up to levels of difficulty to ease players into things. The first and easiest mode will be soft mode. Here, soft and ghost will always be together as one, and the player will use the left stick to move them around the screen. When the player moves the right stick, ghost will detach and be controlled separately to make it through the level. Once the right stick is back in its resting position, ghost will once again join back with soft. In hard mode, the difficulty will ramp up significantly, as Soft and Ghost will always be controlled individually, and the death of one means game over. Players will need to learn to control both snakes moving in different directions without making a mistake. It will take time, practice, and patience to master the skill. Soft Body was originally scheduled to be released this summer, but now has been pushed back to later this year, and will be crossed by with the PlayStation 4 version. Next up. Hey there, Minecrafters! It's that time again when Mojang has released a new Minecraft update featuring numerous new features and fixes. Update 1.17 for the Vita is now available. Available. The new update brings the following new features to the game. Added oak wood fence, spruce wood fence, birch wood fence, jungle wood fence, a whole bunch of other stuff. I'm not going to read all of them because that's a lot of stuff, but here's some of the other key stuff. Um... Added custom super flat user interface, allowing players to customize super flat world generation. Added new in-game options to allow changing game mode, difficulty setting, time of day, and spawn position per player, and disable or enable ambient cave sounds and weather settings. Split load join interface into create load join. Added classic crafting options, so you can now raft the same way as on the Java version if you really want to. This option is also available in the UI settings menu. 
added Little Big Planet mashup pack trial content. All of these new features are ready right now, so download the new update and get building with all those new wooden fences in a super flat world. <laughs> Next up, we've been following the devel development of Volume for a while, and it has featured prom prominently in our hot games list. This week, however, we learned that the PlayStation versions of Mike Bethel's newest title is being managed by UK studio Just Add Water. Best known for their work on the Oddworld Inhabitants titles New and Tasty, Stranger's Wrath HD, and Munch's Odyssey HD, as well as Gravity Crash Ultra. The studio announced the news on their website. The press release explains that due to working with SCEE, Oddworld Inhabitants, and Bossa with nine PlayStation titles in six years demonstrated their suitability to work on volume, especially since the build built-in level creator is something the studio had experimented themselves with Gravity Crash. Stuart Gilray, Jaw LTD's CEO, said of the news, quote, It's an exciting time for us at Jaw at the moment. As well as working on our own unannounced titles, we get to work with incredibly talented people and teams. In this case, Mike Bithel, uh, end quote, CEO Stuart Gilray says, quote, We've been known or we've known Mike since twenty ten, when Mike was about to start out as a fledgling indie developer. We're incredibly proud and happy to be working with Mike on volume and hope it's as much as a success as Thomas was alone, end quote. Following it, or vo volume is set to launch on August 18th on Vita and PS4 and will be published by Bithel Games. All right, on with the news. Looking for a new visual novel with a Western twist to sink your teeth into on your Vita? Well, get prepared to drop some money on good old Kickstarter campaign. Undead Darling, No Cure for Love, could very well make its way onto Vita should it hit a Kickstarter stretch goal of 225000 However, at the time of writing, this game has only hit around 14000 of its 55000 target. A synopsis of what the game would be like can be found on the Kickstarter page, so make sure you head over there and be sure to give it a read. Here's a short excerpt. Quote, What we hope to achieve with Undead Darling's No Cure for Love is to channel and emulate some of the best aspects from different Japanese game genres, such as classic JRPG mechanics and visual novel-style storytelling character growth. We are paying homage to a number of classic and modern game titles with UD and CFL, both in its design, aesthetic, and sometimes subtle, sometimes not so subtle nods within the narrative itself." End quote. Interested? You've only got three weeks left to help the game come to Vita, so get pledging. Bandai Namco Games is no stranger to Vita and localizations, having brought us quite a few in the past. That said, it's also worth noting that not many have been as asked for as Digimon Story Cyber Sleuth, which, as it stands, has over 65,000 signatures in a petition to bring it west. Well, the wait appears to be over. Cyber Sleuth was officially announced for release in select western territories this week. Yay! Bandai has revealed... <laughs> Bandai has revealed that the game will be hitting next year in North America, Latin America, and Brazil as a digital-only release, with a European release using the same release window, getting confirmation soon after. So yeah, yay, if you were looking forward to that, and as we kind of told you already in last week's podcast, it's coming, so don't worry, guys. <laughs> Moving on. The Hand of Fate Facebook page was updated with a rather depressing message this week. There will be no Hand of Fate for Vita consoles. Originally announced for release on PlayStation Vita back in March of 2014, Hand of Fate is already released on many platforms earlier this year. However, many people were starting to notice that the Vita version was nowhere to be found. Now we know why. Here's the Facebook post in full explaining the cancellation. Quote, a quick note on the Vita build of Hand of Fate. After quite a lot of work and a lot of time, we've decided to cancel HOF for Vita. We've pursued a few options, but ultimately the amount of work required was larger than we anticipated, and our assets needed a lot of work to be viable within the smaller footprint. This has taken much longer to decide than we would have liked, because until recently we've been focused on the ongoing support for Hand of Fate for PC, Mac, Linux, PS4, and Xbox One. As a tiny indie team, we have to choose where we apply our resources, and in this case, we've decided they're best used to continue supporting HOF on other platforms and in building new projects. We spoke at length with a studio that specializes in porting games to Vita, 
but in the end, it was the wrong match for them as well. We understand that's disappointing for our Vita fans. It's disappointing to us as well. Apologies for the length of time and effort it's taken to reach this point. End quote. Personally, us too, me and Tyler, think Hand of Fate was quite an interesting concept. A card game fused with an actual RPG action sequences. And are a bit off put by the news. But at the same time, there's just so much good happening for Vita lately, we can't be too sad. <sighs> All right. Digimon, I'm excited <laughs> about that. <laughs> Anyways, next up, Axis Games has announced that Zero Escape Volume 3 is coming to PlayStation Vita, and they've even thrown in a few details. Axis Games have, has revealed this week that the much-asked-for third installment of Zero Escape series is finally in development, and not only will it be coming our way, but it will be doing so with dual audio and a usual mix of multiple endings, familiar faces, and fully voiced characters we've come to expect. But when is it coming? All signs seem to point to summer 2016 release window, though it seems that nothing is set in stone yet, as the press release states, quote, Our intelligence hasn't been able to focus on an exact date at this time, end quote. Next up, a new electronic dance music rhythm game, Wub... Wub Marine <laughs> has been announced for a possible PlayStation Vita release via its Kickstarter page. Wub Marine is about an intergalactic record producer who is in charge of delivering the newest music tracks to various DJs on Earth. On the way to Earth, the producer's spaceship is struck by asteroids and suddenly the music tracks are scattered all over the solar system. It is now up to the producer to find each song and retrieve it for the DJs. According to CMAG Studio, each song serves in it as an individual level and will be different for each mu missing track. In order to retrieve the missing tracks, you must collect individual notes that are scattered through each level. CMAG Studio has announced that if the initial $5,000 Kickstarter PC goal is met, they will be able to purchase a PlayStation Vita dev kit to release it for our beloved handheld. The Kickstarter ends on July 28th, and only $1,066 has been pledged so far, but we've seen things change quickly with these sorts of projects, especially near the end of their pledge window. Next up, Jump SQ Magazine has revealed that Bandai Namco's newest Vita game is called Seraph of the End, The Origin of Fate. Seraph of the End, The Origin of Fate will be a strategy role-playing game based on the Japanese manga of the same name. For the uninitiated, Seraph of the End is about vampires who have arrived on Earth after a virus has decimated the world, only leaving people ages 13 and younger alive. In order to avenge the world, a group of high school-aged students named the Moon Demon Company has vowed to exterminate the murderous vampires. More information on the title is sure to follow. Interesting. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Nevonichi Software recently revealed Yomawari, aka Nightwatch, an exclusive horror title for the PlayStation Vita, and teased that the game will, quote, show you things you shouldn't see, end quote. We now have some details on the game, so here goes. The game starts as you take control of a young girl who is happily taking her dog for a walk when suddenly the dog disappears, and she appears home with dog lead. I assume that means with the dog lead. <laughs> uh, Startled by the dog being missing, the girl's sister leaves the house in an attempt to find the lost dog, only to also disappear herself. When her sister doesn't return, the protagonist girl leaves the house to discover that the town has changed during the eerie events of the dis disappearing family members. The town has been shrouded by a veil of darkness, and things cannot be seen unless the protagonist shines a torch on them. The game is now being described as a trip into the unknown and the paranormal, and is set to release in Japan on October 29th. It's always upsetting to learn about a cancelled project for the PS Vita, but yet another project that we didn't know about has been discussed. This time, that project would have been a port of PlayStation 3 JRPG Nier. In an interview with Taro Yoko, he's the man with the silly mask from Square Enix's E3 press conference, that in 2011 a possible port of the game would have come to PS Vita, he said, quote, We always thought about wanting to do something new. We immediately thought about how there's still a lot of players who haven't played Nier, so we considered making a PlayStation Vita port while adding something new. I had a conversation with ILCA president Takuya Iwasaki on how I'd like to keep working on Nier with Saito, and I found out 
Iwasaki felt the same way. Alongside his company, Orca, we proposed a PS Vita version of Nier, end quote. The reason that port was never happened was because the team at the time were busy working on another project and thus the idea remained just an idea but there's always hope that it might resurface right moving on developer sprite has announced that its pc visual novel ao no kanata no four rhythm is headed to the vita the visual novel takes place in a world where humans fly and participate in competitive sports the flying circus reigning supreme among them Protagonist Masaya Hinata suffers a humiliating defeat and decides to quit the sport for good. He then later meets a student named Asuka Kurushina, who he then teaches the ins and outs of flying and the flying circus. The Vita port will include extras such as new scenes and scenarios and will have various adult scenes censored in order to meet a ratings guideline. Ao no Kanata no 4 Rhythm will be seeing a 2016 release in Japan with no word on a Western release. All right, next up, have you heard of Disc Storm? We got to grips with it at EGX, raised earlier this year. Best described to us as a game featuring the classic aesthetic of Bomberman, fast-paced gameplay of Towerfall, and draws on the hectic, ever-changing nature of Warrior War. Where we were, we will have an interview with XMPT Games team in issue 3 of our magazine, which explains a little more about the game. But before that, we can tell you a little bit about one of the arenas that you will experience within their upcoming frisbee throwing party game. In a post on their website, they discuss the challenges and ideas within the Enchanted Forest map, as it was one wait as it was one of the last areas to be created. The team feel that the art style and mechanics within the forest are to a higher standard to come of the other areas. With two rows of bushes to hide behind, the team hoped that it could be handy for getting off a sneaky, crucial shot off in a multiplayer match. Rather than using it to hide behind for a large period of time, the addition of the hedges is said to allow for a more tactical game offensively or defensively compared to some of the other arenas. Another mechanic within the Enchanted Forests are a set of vines which can affect the trajectory of your shots a l a least temporarily... wait at least temporarily dotting the vines will remove them from the wait before oh my gosh i'm just messing everything up now jotting the vines will remove them before they grow back we are really looking forward to disc storm and can't wait to find out more from the chaps at xmpt games soon next up Alongside its first print campaign, more DLC songs for Tycho Drum Master V version have been announced. Among the first is Daydream Cafe from the From is the Order a Rabbit, which releases the same date Tycho launches, on July 9th, in August. Rising Hope from the Irregular at Magic High School will be the anime song of the month, while Music Revolver from Music Gun Gun 2 is the video game song. Also on July 9th, you'll be able to purchase a song bundle called Popular Track Pack 1 for 500 yen, which includes Daydream Cafe, Ai Uta from Green, Kyle, you're a jerk, Kara by Kumamushi, a medley track from Vita Game, Chain Chronicle V, and New cost Costumes. Popular Track 2 will also be available at launch and features a track by popular Japanese band Maximum the Hero... Ho, ho, see, now English words are messing me up. Hormone. A song from anime Genesis of Aquarian, an Ultraman X song, and a medley from the Sengoku Bazaara series. This bundle includes songs of higher difficulty. Bandai Namco Games also announced a collaboration between Taiko Drum Master V version for its release and Chain Chronicle V for its first year anniversary. Chain Chronicle V songs and costumes will be added to Taiko. Chain Chronicle V will receive Taiko's mascots in return. Good news, right? I just have to jump in and comment right here. Go because <laughs> you, you fucking nailed some of the harder words and you fucked up English words that are so <laughs> obvious. Tyler, Tyler, Tyler. <laughs> I'm just messing always myself a good, up. Always a good time with you reading. I yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> Never a dull moment. <laughs> well, here comes some more Japanese words that I'm not going to figure out. Next up. <laughs> Himoto Umaru... Umaru-chan. Himoto Upbringing Project was announced just last week, but now we have more information regarding the game. This game has a ridiculously long name, which is fitting as main character... character. Umaru is fixing to have a long summer. All of Umaru's belongings have been taken away from her by her older brother, Taihi, so he, she can be more productive. But all these... All this means is that the player will have to take care of her and help her with her habits. In upbringing mode, stats like knowledge, game, exercise, and housework are listed, as well as active power, EXP, and HP. When Umaru isn't at home being lazy, however, the game will switch to a visual novel format. It has also been confirmed that the heroine voice actors from the anime will be reprising their roles and that there will be an original event Wait, there will be original event graphics in the game. Himoto Umaru-chan Imoto Upbringing Project hits Vitas across Japan this winter. All right, moving on. Inti Creates and Experience recently came together to talk about the PlayStation Vita version of Galgun Double Piece, and here is the small list of information they've given us. It will support cross-buy and cross-save with the PlayStation 4 version, so save states and DLC are transferable. The Vita download is somewhere around 2 gigabytes, and the PlayStation TV, aka PS Vita TV, will not be supported. Also, Doki Doki Mode will support the touchscreen, as well as playing the game with the screen vertically. Galgun Double Piece comes out August 6th in Japan with no word on a Western localization. Last week, we brought you news that Atelier Sophie would be making its way to PlayStation Vitas in Japan later this year. We now have some solid story details on just what this game is all about. The sound of the leaves, the birds sing as the sun shines upon the flowers in the street. That's the kind of atmosphere you find outside the town where sunlight filters through the foliage and the yin and yang carpet found on the pathway where the young girl resides. She's spirited, but not perfect, a normal girl, but she has a special power that none other from the town possesses. A mysterious power that combines various material to create something completely different, alchemy. However, after continuously failing important mixtures, the book with information on alchemy and the girl without a teacher were at their limits. One day, the girl encounters a mysterious book that can talk and move on its own. This encounter with the knowledge of alchemy, that is the book, was a small step to a quiet yet certain new step. As well as this, we have some information on the two main characters of the game, Sophie and her partner, Prachka. Sophie Neuenmeyer, age 16. Sophie is the protagonist of the title. She's a young girl who runs an atelier outside of the town kit, Kilhen Bell. She's a bright and cheerful girl, known for being able to soften the atmosphere around her, but she can also slip up and show her sloppy side at times. She loves alchemy, and nothing brings her greater pleasure than using it to help those around her. She shows plenty of curiosity and effort when it comes to alchemy, but she's not exactly the best at keeping her house tidy, so she lets other people handle it instead. Prachka. Prachka is an old book owned by Sophie's grandmother and has been kept in the atelier bookshelf. Using a recipe written in the book, Sophie awakens her and Prachka becomes a teacher figure at the arts of alchemy. After a certain event, this book takes the form of a human, but she still has the same personality as when she was a book, and continues giving Sophie alchemy advice. However, Prachka doesn't know much else beside alchemy, and gets a little confused when walking around town and seeing all the things that don't make sense to her. Atelier Sophie, Alchemist of the Mysterious Book, will release in Japan on September 25th, with no word yet on a Western localization. Next up, after several tra trailer reveals, we now have details regarding how to be a successful adventurer in the upcoming dungeon crawler, Rage Agon. So let's begin with the dungeons themselves, which are named Megalocytes in the game. Of course, these dungeons are crawling with giant monsters who you'll have to battle, but will also include puzzles to solve, resources to acquire, and bosses to battle. Be warned, in Rage Agon, you will be unable to view the whole map at one time. However, to encourage players to be more strategic with their playstyle, Gigants and Resources positions will be clearly indicated from the beginning. This allows players to look for shortcuts, potentially avoid much stronger enemies, as well as discovering which treasure if worth go is worth going for. 
Knowing what you're up against while exploring each megalocyte will give you an advantage and is the key feature of the game, but sometimes you'll have no choice but to fight a monster who is not your own size. Luckily, you can easily differentiate between stronger and weaker enemies thanks to the colored skull system. Blue indicates weak monsters, yellow highlights a tough fight, and red means you're in for a brutal battle. Another interesting design choice in the game is that you can decide whether to battle a weak monster or stronger one at certain points. Reijigant will release on July 30th in Japan for PlayStation Vita, and we await news of a Western release. Alright, next up, we also have some release date announcements, which we've condensed to just the short facts and minimal fluff. First up, Persona 4 Dancing All Night will indeed launch in Europe in autumn, and have also confirmed that it will be released both physically and digitally, as well as a special edition known as the Disco Fever Edition. Here's what it contains. Two discs chock full of Persona 4 music remixes. Last night, a Vita pouch saved my life. Teddy in an Elvis suit, P4D themed Vita pouch. All about that bear, Teddy themed faux gold keychain. A large collectible box with custom disco ball art based on the Japanese crazy value pack version of P4D. A form-fitting cover band, P PS Vita slim skin to show off your very essence of P4D. Second on the list is Marvelous Europe, who announced this week that they will be bringing the horror-infused visual novel Corpse Party Blood Drive to European shores this fall, the target being an October release, though they aren't promising anything. It, it'll be coming to the region both digitally and physically, with a standard physical edition priced at 30 euros, I think, or pounds, <laughs> and a special... Pounds. pounds? Okay. Pounds, and a special Ever After edition of the game, including a two-disc soundtrack and 100-page art book priced at £45. Third on the list is Sega's anime crossover fighting game Dengeki Bunko Fighting Climax, which, will, which we're happy to announce will be available this October in North America, priced at $29.99 US, and the game will feature characters from, the, from such animes as Sword Art Online, Excel World, and a certain magical index. All right, home stretch guys. The next pure release date announcement we have this week is regarding Wolf Brew Games' action platformer Slain, which has just been revealed to be launching sometime this January, a couple of months after its initial target release of September. Second to last on this list is news that Grand Kingdom, the spiritual successor to Grand Knight's history for PSP, will release in Japan on October 22nd and will cost Vita owners 6,480 yen. A first-run edition was also announced and is set to include a mini soundtrack featuring a selection of songs from the game, as well as a Noble Unit DLC which includes armor and weapons for use in-game. To finish off the news and announcements, we finally have a Japanese release date and a smidgen of details for the new Two Love Rue title announced last year. The game will feature Rito, who has lost his memories in a certain incident and doesn't remember anything since meeting Lala. It will also feature various girls showing their affection for Rito, whatever that means. Wink wink, nudge nudge. As for the release date bit, To Love Rue Trouble Darkness True Princess is set to release in Japan on November 5th with a limited edition version of the game, including a limited illustration package, a Momo and Mia blanket, and an alternative cover art for each of the 11 girls set to be available for an 8,980 yen. First print copies of the game will also feature DLC that allows players to see through each of the girls' clothes with a special pervert's goggle, so order quick if that's something that tickles your fancy like it tickles Tyler's. <laughs> and that's the news. <laughs> oh, that's weird. Yeah. If only I had one of those in high school. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho. Well, all right. <laughs> How did you like that news, Tyler? Anything look interesting to you? Because that's our first talking point, as usual. Well, of course, I'm so happy that Digimon Story Cyber Sleuth finally got announced to be coming over here. How but... happy, Tyler, on a scale of 1 to 10? 10. I'm Boom! At 10. You heard it right here. <laughs> yeah, that game looks awesome, and all these people enjoying it, and I'm just like, I can't read Japanese. And just crying to myself. Now I will be able to read some English and enjoy enjoy the game. So that one's <laughs> definitely on my list. Um, the, 
Zero Escape Volume Three. I'm. I don't know. I didn't finish the fir or the second one, so Virtue's Last Reward, which I re-downloaded because I was like, you know what? These visual novel games have slowly started to become one of my top genres now, so I think I'm gonna get back into it and see if I can't beat that game and see if I'm excited for the third one. So, well, kind of on the fence with that one, but definitely gonna keep my eyes on it. Um, also. That Yomawari game, is that how you say it? That horror game? Yeah. That one. I want to know more about it. And I don't mind getting scared, because I think the last episode, I, or was it the last? Yeah, I think the last episode I was saying how I was like, I'm going to avoid that game. I was kidding. I don't, I'm not going to avoid it. That's like a, that's a... <laughs> Tell I got a whole bunch of hate mail. It was like, you pussy. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, but... That's definitely a game I would love to play because that's like a perfect game for like a YouTube channel because people love to watch other people get scared. So I'll I'll record that at like night at like three in the morning, all the lights off and just darkness, and I'll just be like, all right, here we go. Oh God! Just freak so out. So nobody can tell when you shit your pants, Tyler. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what else? What else here? Um. Mm, 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 mm. There's not, I don't think there's anything, well actually, what's that one game, Disc Storm, I think that's what it's called, that one looks interesting, I'm down for some of that, um, yeah, from, well of course the the new release, or the thing we did at the end with the release is Persona 4 Dancing All Night, Corpse Party, Blood Drive, uh, I'm, I still need to watch a video on that Dengeki Bunko fighting game, because Kyle doesn't even know what it's all about, and he's wanting it like crazy, I hate fighting games, so. I'm gonna have to buy it and just beat his ass and be like, ha, I fucking hate these games and I'm still kicking your ass. <laughs> Good luck, my friend. Good luck. I, I, I suck, though. So you'd probably destroy me every time. Wow. That's why I can only play you in, like, Dive Kick and. Pers or not Persona. Dive Kick and uh, PlayStation All Stars, because those aren't true fighting games. So. Ha. Yeah. yeah. What about you, Kyle? <laughs> All right, well, a couple things look good for me. Um, Digimon Story Cyber Sleuth, of course, although I'm not as hyped for it as you. Um, I was hoping that it was going to come over. <laughs> um, Zero Escape Volume 3, I still have to play Virtue's Last Ward, and people keep saying play 999 before, so I'm I'm torn. I don't know what I'm going to do. I have Virtue's <laughs> Last Ward already. Uh, I don't know. Is 999 okay. on the like PSP store for the Vita? No. Ooh. Yeah, so, see, that's the thing. I'm like, I gotta use another console to play this fucking game? <laughs> like, I don't want to do that. I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. I don't we'll know see. about that. I'll make a decision. <laughs> it depends. I'm not actually sure what other platforms, other than I know it's on, I think, 3DS or DS, one of the two. Um, but I think it's on another platform, so I don't know. I might look into it a bit. Um, but yeah, that. Um... Yoma Wari, as we were talking about, I'm super interested in anything horror, so I'm down for that if that's coming over here. Um, what else? That's in the initial thing, but of course, then there's uh, Corpse Party Blood Drive, then Geeky Bunko Fighting Climax, and I don't know, maybe that Two Love Rue game too, I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> you just want them goggles. Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> but you wouldn't even be able to use them, though, because isn't it DLC? So you'd have to make sure you were on your Japanese account. Well, whatever, Tyler. Localize it. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm trying to be realistic. You should localize the game for me, Tyler. That's what you should do. I don't think they would add the goggles <laughs> if it got localized. I think they'd just take it out. They'd be like, uh... That ESRB... <laughs> <laughs> You're probably right. They don't like them goggles. <laughs> my my hopes have been destroyed. Thanks, Tyler. I'm sorry. Thanks. Just buy the game. Buy it on for if it. Re okay, I'm getting confused. Anyways, if it comes out in the West, buy it for the West, and then buy it also for your Japanese account. So when you want to use the goggles, you can just get onto your Japanese account. <laughs> or just buy goggles. a physical Japanese version, and then I can play it on my English account. And then when I want to, I can load up a Japanese account, delete the save re you know configure some shit and then get to playing it on the japanese account with the goggles <laughs> well there you go Damn. you Damn figure God. it out Damn. <laughs> anywho we'll see maybe i hate important shit anywho 
I think that's it for announced release games we're looking forward to from the week, other than, you know, there's always those games way back coming still that we haven't talked about this week that we want. Oh, we'll yeah. see there's Dynamics. a full list. <laughs> <laughs> but anywho, um, we also wanted to mention, uh, just briefly, I guess, that there's a image and form uh, question and answer interview on the site, so if you're looking to hear about their kind of work and what's up with Image and Form, uh, you should check out that interview on the site. And it's also in the magazine, I believe, too. So, there you go. Um, moving on. Uh, I look at July's PlayStation Vita releases, so um, as usual, we'd like to remind you that we have a monthly post that goes up right around the start of the month that details what's coming out this month that we know about um, we were a little late this month on the video, but that's kind of my fault because my computer's dead and Tyler had to do it and his internet was screwed, so <laughs> we just kind of got double backhanded this month and yeah, so sorry about that, but if you're interested in finding out what's coming for the month, that's up on the site and up on YouTube, so check them out. And we bring us to our last kind of talking point that I've, I would actually kind of like to talk about, and that's the Vita Lounge turns three. So what do you think about that, Tyler? Happy birthday. <laughs> you sound super <laughs> enthused. No, nah, I'll go more into it. I was just being a, a silly guy for a second. It's, it's kind of crazy, because I don't remember exactly when I joined, but damn, does time fly. Because I think... It had to have been late, was it late 2012 or was it early 2013 when I joined? Or was it, it wasn't 2014, I know that. You but. joined after me and I joined early 2013. Okay, so I don't think it was much longer after you, but I, I can't remember. But anyways, that that's not the I point. I think it was about mid-year. I think you're about two years in now, Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me getting old. Yeah. Anyways, it's, it's crazy. I mean, we've got so many reviews on this site. It's a lot of news stories going up daily. It's just, it's great to see what everyone's done and contributed and the community joining in and the forums and, like, just how there's always something new going on. Like, with uh, the Vita cast starting up, our lounge plays going, the magazine, the forum, there's just so much going on on this uh, on this website that's... It's amazing <laughs> for something that everyone thinks that is dead and doesn't really exist anymore and doesn't have a place in the gaming world. It's just it's crazy. Kyle, what do you think about it turning three? <laughs> well, um, I'm I'm just I'm glad it's still around and I'm I'm glad we got to the point we are where we're such a close knit team of dudes who just you know love the Vita and. Love to, you know, review games and do all this stuff for mostly the fun of it. So it's it's very unique situation coming from, you know, somebody who knows that in places like IGN, stuff doesn't really get done right. <laughs> and then looking at what we do, you know, most of it I'm I'm proud to say is is pretty awesome. And we have hiccups here and there. We're not perfect, we're just a bunch of dudes, but you know, that's it's it's been a crazy ride, and I can't believe that you know I've been with the Vita Lounge almost two and a half years. It's fucking nuts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, here's to another three years, right? Definitely, man. Three or four or seven or eight or whatever the hell <laughs> the Vita's gonna last for. Right? <laughs> I'm in for the ride. <laughs> oh yeah, we're buckled up. We're ready. Awkward silence. Yeah, we got cat issues. Cats fucking one. Uh, I can't even hear them, so I think we're good. Oh, I, I muted there for a sec, so I was trying to like wait it out, but then it kept fucking whining. So, <laughs> <laughs> smack it. And, yeah, well, it's I gotta go out the door and around. The, yeah, no, well, too much. Work. That is too much. Work. <clears throat> Why don't you just Anywho, put it on your lap and pet it like an evil genius or something? Because there's two. <laughs> then the other one will whine. <laughs> so, so grab both of them. Put them both on your. You got two legs and two arms. Yeah, but I need my one arm to scroll the mouse so I can read this shit. <laughs> Cats like mice. So it doesn't work. Just have the cat scroll it. Yeah, not going to work out. No. <laughs> whatever. I tried. Yeah, whatever to you two, Tyler. Let's move on. Uh, 
we've talked about that, but if you're interested in hearing what Paul had to say about the whole ordeal and kind of some stats and cool stuff, then you should check out the post on the site, which details a whole bunch of stuff and has some cool comments too. So there you go. Well, let's move on to listener mail and uh, I'm going to read the first one. So Jonathan Carnero at J-H-O Carnero on Twitter asks, do you know any other persona like games such as mind zero, but better? What do you think, Tyler? Of course you want to read that one. So you make me talk jerk. That's right. I don't even know, other than maybe, hold on, other Persona-like games, okay, now, he could mean with, like, the social links aspect of the game, or with the whole, you got your Persona, like, uh, you call in this extra, de- I, what what is the word I'm looking for, basically a, a monster type thing that helps you fight. Or is he talking like just an RPG that uses the same turn based thing? So I'm gonna I'm gonna try to answer the best I think he's asking. So Final Fantasy X, you can summon things and I can't remember what they're called, but you can summon them and they help you fight. Kinda like a persona. And it's also turn-based fighting, so if you like turn-based summoning giant monsters to help you battle things, there you go, Final Fantasy X. Um, yeah, I don't really know if there's that much on the Vita that I can think of, especially ones that are as good as Persona. Um, I'm looking here on my on my Vita right now, seeing if I have anything that I'm totally blanking on. I'm like, oh, well, I feel like a dummy. <laughs> yeah, I think that's all I can really think of is Final Fantasy X and like any turn-based RPG, really. Kyle, I hate you You're making me answer this one first. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't know. I just thought you know you should talk more. Um, but oh. um, yeah, it, it's a hard one because really, like to combine all those elements. The closest thing I think out there, and this is not having played it, but having seen quite a few videos about the start of it at least, um, Mind Zero, and it's it's apparently not a good game, so I don't know. Can't really recommend that. However, um, another one that's kind of like that, although it's also not the greatest game, um, is Conception 2, Children of the, I think it's Seven Stars or something like that. Yeah. Um, and that one has, you know, social-esque elements. It has, you know, battles where you can battle with your character or, I believe, a Persona-like thing. Um, I haven't played that one in a while, but, um, yeah, it's, it's kind of the same kind of idea, and it's it's well-drawn, but I don't know. It's, meh. <laughs> I just, I couldn't get into it. Maybe it was the whole, you know, um, children aspect of it. I don't know. It's kind of weird. Um, but yeah, it's, it's hard to find games that are really like that. Um, if, if you're talking just straight up social aspects, Dang and Rampo is kind of like that. Um, because some of the social stuff has to do with, you know, what happens, but not really. I don't know. It's, it's complicated in Dang and Rampo. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know. There's not a whole lot of games that are like Persona on Vita, except the other Persona games, which are not really on Vita, but you can play them on Vita. So they're, right. get other Persona games. Yeah. <laughs> do that or some of the other final fantasy games that are also not vita native but are still awesome and you can play them on vita yay (laughs) (laughs) all right thanks jonathan for your question and we hope we answered it to your satisfaction moving on you can read this one tyler all right from our very own lat (laughs) at ladder ladder Oh my gosh, Lateralis. I've never actually said his name, his Twitter name, which is weird now that I'm saying it. Anyways, L-A-T-E-R-A-L-U-S-2801. And he asks, what has the better chance of happening? Sony AAA Vita titles or Liam being sober? Uh, I don't know. I think both of them might be a very, very slim chance. <laughs> what do you think, Tom? <laughs> uh, it's it's like that whole thing where if Pinocchio says my nose will grow, 
he told, wait, no, wait, what's the, damn it, I messed that up. What's the, the there's a thing where if Pinocchio says something, he's lying, but if his nose starts to grow, he's then not lying, so then it it just totally messes with your mind. I can't, even, I can't think of what he's supposed to say. I can't remember. <laughs> okay, Tyler. <laughs> anyway, there, I've heard it before, and it's like, whoa! It's like one of those like things where <laughs> if you think about it, it just hurts your brain. God, what is it? It's if uh, I don't know. Anyways, it's a Pinocchio thing. It's just going to hurt the brain to think about that. Liam loves to drink. Sony loves to not support the Vita. What has a better chance of happening? Uh, well, Sony did say they're not continuing AAA Vita titles, so... I guess I'd have to go with Liam being sober. Maybe he's gonna... He's gonna do some dirty acts with some person, and a, a child's gonna become of it, and he's gonna be like, wow... Time to sober up. Boom. That's the Liam sobering up. Wow, story. that was heavy. <laughs> yeah. Some heavy shit there, Tyler. It got real. It gets real on the Vita cast sometimes. I think it scared me a little, Tyler. Did I? I'm sorry. <laughs> just a little. Just a little. We're okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. So Tyler thinks Liam has a better chance of being sober than Sony AAA Vita titles. I think they're both the same. I think it's too close to call. <laughs> so let's leave it at that. Thanks for your question, Lat. Wait a minute. If what that if, is your real name? <laughs> what if Liam not drinking ends up transferring some of that alcohol to a Sony executive and he gets drunk and then it's like, let's make a feed a triple A title. And then it happens. See? That's the Pinocchio <laughs> effect. Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> anyways let's move on before it gets weird alrighty next one is from Gabriel Forever at Gabriel underscore 4 EVR on Twitter and he asks how big of a loss will it be to you guys when PlayStation Mobile is gone it's not the biggest loss for me I've got a couple games on my Vita that are uh, PSM games it sucks more than anything, because there is definitely some potential there, and you never know what can come come of that, but now will, there's nothing that's going to come of that other than what's already there, so I mean yeah, I've picked up the games that I really wanted and everything else is just meh, so I'm good now, but it, it does suck but not the biggest loss. Kyle, what about you? The only game from PlayStation Mobile I will miss is Haunt the House Terror Town. The rest of it, meh. <laughs> well, are you going to download it and make sure you always have it? No, I, I've played it a lot and I think I can let it go. Plus there's a browser version if I feel the need and start itching for it. <laughs> ah. Well, yeah. poor PSM. Yeah, let's move on. <laughs> Thanks, Gabriel, for your question. Uh, next one here is from Nonskippo at Nonskippo, N-O-N-S-C-P-O. And he asks us a question that I think we answered last week. And the question is, what are your thoughts on previous Vita-specific websites transitioning away or adding other handhelds in their coverage? So basically, a Vita site adding 3DS coverage, blah, blah, blah. I'm pretty sure we answered somewhat similar to that regarding like our YouTube channel or, or us in general on uh, covering other platforms. Um, but yeah, just to reiterate it, I mean, it's the Vita is one of the slowest growing market there, I guess. So expanding your coverage of other systems, especially one that's doing very well for itself, makes sense for someone that's looking out for maybe that they just want to get more views and clicks and all that fun stuff, but yeah, I mean, it's not really what we're all about. We're about covering something that we love, and 
doing it right. So, yeah. Kyle, do you have anything else to add to that? Yeah, I, I think it's just, you know, a lot of beta YouTubers are in it just because nobody else is in it. So now that, you know, they think that this platform is dying, they're jumping ship to the next, you know, big thing that they think that they can make a name for themselves with. So whatever. I don't know. They come, they go. We stay eternal. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's the same thing with, like, with my YouTube channel. I, I did consider at one point, like, totally changing my name and just uh doing like a generic gaming channel but still mainly covering the vita because that's what what i play the most but in the end i decided not to and i'm just going to continue with this channel until the very last droplet of life oozes out of the vita's skin that's that's dark but anyways in like 2025 <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it'll be around for a while i ain't weird yeah but i mean it makes sense for people and stuff to do that kind of thing so but for us we like what we're doing uh, and then his next question here is thoughts on the trend of gamers migrating away from n4g to other aggregate sites like game wires will it affect vita coverage yes and no i mean n4g accounts for about five percent i believe of the vita lounge's traffic so it's like even if it completely went away it's not a huge blow but like i mean it's not i'm not gonna say it doesn't hurt if some shit happens that you know it isn't as popular and we don't get as many views from it i don't know it's just not huge like if google went away we'd be fucked <laughs> <laughs> what do you think just, tyler you could just bing it right no yeah fuck bing <laughs> okay well yeah I, I, i'm just gonna go with what you're saying i didn't really know the numbers of all that stuff but I feel like if N4G were to go away, you know, something else would just pop up. Some other website would start to get that traffic, and you'd start to see something else rise above it. So, yeah. I mean, there's always something that could be affected by that. And, yeah. <laughs> we'll have to see. So thanks All right, moving on. on. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Nanskipo, as usual. Our last listener mail of the week is from Evan at some platypus guy on Twitter, spelled like it's supposed to be spelled. <laughs> and his question is, do you think there's a chance of 999 getting ported to the Vita now that Zero Escape 3 is coming? I highly doubt it, but I'm curious what your thoughts are. So throw down, Tyler, what do you think? Hmm. I would agree. Probably very unlikely, but is this a PSP game? Yeah, see, I don't think it's on PSP. I'm pretty sure it's not, actually. Well, so, right. I don't I was, know. I was going to say, if it's PSP, then I could see it easily just being added to, like, supported. But I guess if it's not a PSP game, I, I don't really see... Uh, I don't know. I mean, like, is it worth going back, or is it that difficult? So I, I really don't know. I'm not a developer, so <laughs> I couldn't tell you... I mean, I could see an awesome bundle opportunity with that game and the second one and now the third one, but I don't know. I don't, I don't think it's worth it. I feel like the people that are going to play Zero Escape 3 are mainly going to be a lot of people that already played the first two games, so is it worth at all bringing that one? I don't know. I also highly doubt it. Kyle? Yeah, so I just checked while you were talking there, and it's on DS and iOS. So, yeah, no no PSP, and I don't know. I don't think we're going to get it, but I it would be nice just to complete out the, uh, the three that they're kind of, you know, dropping. Right, and that's kind of the problem with having things separated from different consoles and whatnot. It kind of sucks, but, yeah, I, like I said, I feel like people that played 999... And Virtue's Last Reward are going to be people that are going to pick up Zero Escape 3. And then there's going to be me that's like completely lost and just getting it because everyone wants it. And I'm like, oh, I gotta get it too! So. <laughs> yeah. Alrighty then. That's it for our listener mail. Thank you, some platypus guy, Evan, for your question and everybody else. 
Let's move on to check this out, and it's Tyler this week. So does Tyler have anything, or is he caught off guard? Let's see. Well, I can tell you one thing. Don't get real fishing master's challenge. <laughs> this is a check this out, not don't check this out, Tyler. Well, I think that's also a good tip as well, Kyle, so I figured I would say it just to kind of kill time as I s scroll through something right now to keep you busy since you don't know <laughs> if I've actually chosen something <laughs> for my check this out but I'm sure there's something here that's worthy of it and it's on the tip of my tongue I'm gonna say it are you sure it's not on the tip of your mouse <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> I'm almost there Kyle it's just, it's so close. You know what? We never said, Kyle, you're going to hate this one, because I, I, mean, I don't care if you hate it. Go buy Minecraft. If you haven't bought Minecraft, you're crazy, unless you're Kyle and you hate it. But if you got 20 bucks laying around and you love building stuff, you should pick up Minecraft. But I'm sure everyone else has already picked up Minecraft, because it's an amazing game. But if you haven't, or don't even know what Minecraft is, well... You're crazy. Pick it up. Get it. There's tons of DLC, lots of uh, costumes, world editor, not editor, world, what is the thing I'm thinking of? I can't even think of it. Basically where it changes the template of the world, basically, to look different. Skins. That's the one. Skins. World skins. Go get that stuff. And there you go, Minecraft. That's my check this out. Kyle agrees with me. <laughs> Not really, but if you want a worthy cause, you can always make Kyle Minecraft on GoFundMe. Ooh, look at that plug. Tell them about it, Kyle. Maybe they missed it. Well, if you didn't hear from last week, a uh, little issue with the laptop, so Tyler set up a little thing here that I'll let him explain because I'm the host and he should be talking. Ah, <sighs> God, I hate you. I'm going to take that down and take all the money. Anyways, I'm just kidding. I wouldn't do that. Uh, so as Kyle alluded to, uh, unfortunately he had a little acc accident involving his laptop ceasing to exist because of an accident involving water. And you know electronics and water don't mix unless you're in one of those new smartphones that's water resistant and his laptop is not. So his last laptop lost the battle and he's out quite a bit of money so like he said I set up a GoFundMe thing where you can basically make Kyle play Minecraft for helping him get a new laptop so if you pick up a or not pick up if you donate to his GoFundMe thing uh, every what was it $50 Kyle yes sir um, every $50 will extend the playtime 15 minutes and Kyle's going to hate it and love it at the same time. I can't wait. And Kyle can't either, right Kyle? Right Kyle? Uh, yeah, Tyler, yeah. What are, what are we at right <laughs> it's, now? It's torturing me and helping me at the same time, and I know Tyler loves that sort of thing. So, you know. <laughs> what are we at right now, Kyle? Uh, we're at 50, I believe, on the actual GoFundMe thing. So, so there But I'm at about 100 and a little bit towards, so. Nice. Well, you're getting there. And we're helping you out. So, yeah. Alrighty. Yeah, so that's that. Um, yeah, check out Minecraft, I guess. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we don't have any threads to look at on the forum this week, unfortunately. Uh, lots going on, so we kind of skipped that one. Alright, that's all for this week's cast. If you got listener mail or comments, contact us via media services at thevitalounge.net. You can find everything we talked about today at thevitalounge.net, news, reviews, featured articles, store updates, podcast, a community forum, and a magazine, both digital and physical. Speaking of which, if you want to support the site and get physical copies of the magazine, you can do so via patreon.com slash thevitalounge. You can also find us on Twitter. I'm at Teflon Tactics. Tyler's at Mr. PS Vita Reviews. The site is at The Vita Lounge. You can also find us on Facebook. Search The Vita Lounge. YouTube, search Lounge Play or The Vita Lounge. Uh, we post up Lounge Plays, the monthly release videos, all sorts of Vita goodies. So get on subscribing there and checking out our videos. 
This podcast is available on iTunes, Podbean, Stitcher, YouTube, and via direct download on the site. That's all. You love me for hosting, I know you do, and Tyler for not talking so much, but kind of still talking a lot. So, hope you enjoyed the cast. Back to real fishing. <laughs>